Hello, I'm Alexia Barrier, a professional sailor and also founder of the association For My Planet. Aboard my ship, I've covered long distances at sea and visited remote places. I'd like to share with you everything I've seen and learned about the ocean. But there is not enough room on my boat to accommodate all of you. So with Wild Immersion, we propose a series of immersive episodes to discover the ocean. Actually, I think he's waiting for us. We can't keep him waiting any longer. Let's go and meet him. Hello, Ocean. Hello, Alexia. Can you see this planet? Of course I can. Could it be the Earth? Yes, one can recognize it by its color, ocean blue. Hence the name, the Blue Planet. Exactly. And as you may already know, I cover 70% of its surface. I am the ocean. I am home to hundreds of thousands of living species, both animals and plants. Some of which you all know of, but most of which you have yet to discover. Wow, amazing! But tell me more, how did it all begin? To find out, you have to go back to the origins. You see, I am as old as the world itself. Over three and a half billion years ago, I was still empty and lifeless, or so it seemed. What can you see here? Well, nothing at all. But they're here, invisible to the naked eye. Cyanobacteria. These microscopic creatures were among the first beings to come to life. To stay alive, they don't need oxygen. And that's just as well, because back then, there was very little oxygen in the atmosphere and a lot of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. So, where did the oxygen that we all breathe come from? Well, from the cyanobacteria themselves. Thanks to sunlight, they are actually able to absorb carbon dioxide, transform it, and release oxygen, like the plants we know today. Ah, you mean they are capable of photosynthesis? Gradually, cyanobacteria captured carbon from the atmosphere and released oxygen. A few billion years later, the air became breathable, with the chemical composition we know today. Amazing! These cyanobacteria have actually created the right conditions for life to develop on land. Which just proves that the true planet's lung is you, the ocean. And I thank you for reminding this fact to our audience. I produce more than half the oxygen present in the atmosphere. That's because, in addition to cyanobacteria, I am now home to a multitude of living beings capable of photosynthesis. I'm thinking of microscopic algae, which are plants. The combination of algae and cyanobacteria form what we call phytoplankton. Literally, plant plankton. Phytoplankton. I've heard of it. It's at the basis of a marine food chain, isn't it? You know a lot about it. In fact, it is first eaten by small microscopic animals, the zooplankton, or animal plankton, which are then eaten by larger species such as sardines and rays. In turn, some of these species may be hunted by predators such as dolphins or sea lions. Even the world's largest fish, the whale shark, feeds on zooplankton, which, as you know, eats phytoplankton. Whether on the land to breathe or at sea to feed, everyone relies on phytoplankton. And phytoplankton also depends on others. Large marine animals in particular, such as sperm whales, are crucial. Their excrement decomposes into mineral matter, a natural fertilizer that feeds the growth of cyanobacteria, algae, and other aquatic plants. They themselves are eaten by herbivorous fish, or, as you can see here, by sea turtles. Mm. 
For their part, large predators like sharks maintain the balance between plankton and all those who feed on them. More than a food chain, it's a cycle, a real network. So when we catch too many fish, hunt whales, or damage the seabed, are we endangering this marine web? Indeed. And at a time of climate change, phytoplankton and their allies, such as sperm whales, are essential because they capture a large amount of the carbon dioxide produced by humans. And they have their hands full because we are producing tons of carbon dioxide. Too much for them to capture, in fact. Fortunately, there are plenty of solutions to reduce our carbon footprint in the atmosphere. Like walking or cycling to school, for instance. Thank you, Ocean, and thank you, kids, for being with us. You are the heroes and heroines of tomorrow. Knowing more about the ocean is the first step towards protecting it and acting together today. We hope to see you soon. In the next episode, we'll be exploring coral reefs and their inhabitants. <laughs>